Well, we moved the plane. Here we are at the Bartow Airport with 761 Pop Yankee and now 417 Kilo Fox. Welcome to the Bartow Airport. All right, so we're gonna talk about the latest with the plane since you guys have been gone. Um, obviously the plane has been moved here. So I wanna talk about the transport process, how we got the plane here. I finished my turtle deck hinge and the remainder of the turtle deck as well as the strakes and root bearings for the wings. And then all the paperwork is finished for my final inspection with the exception of weight balance and all the electrical is done. I had an issue with my control stick that I've fixed, as well as autopilot is configured and transponder, magnetometers calibrated, and let's see, there's something else in there. In the GP, GPX, oh yeah, AHARS. So those are all the things that we're gonna catch up on, starting with the tow transport kit. So this transport kit has brought me a lot of grief, but it ended up working out great. I did mention that I customized this basically just welded on a, I didn't, I took it to a friend that has a fab shop, welded on a sleeve and allowed this to slide because the STI wing is too long for this kit. The standard wing is two inches shorter. So, I mean, and that too long, I mean too long of a cord, not too long of a wingspan. So that was modified properly. Drill some holes to lock them in place as well as the side, um, the front spar. And I'll just show you briefly how it detaches. When I was moving the plane, it was really stressful, not gonna lie. Um, and I didn't have, the patience to film that process. I would rather it move my plane safely than get footage of it. So I didn't get a shot of how it's actually attached when it's folded, but you'll get the general idea. Moving the plane just before I go and show you this stuff was really simple. Um, without this kit, I would not do it because there's just too much force sort of flopping around on the wings and this definitely locks everything in place. So not really an option if you're gonna trailer it or move it somehow. That being said, we just sort of rolled it onto a gooseneck. I'll put a picture up, ratcheted it down with some ratchet straps and drove it about 20 miles to this, this airport here in Bartow. So this long spar attaches here to the end of the wing spar on the front end. There actually is a provided bolt there. And that attaches there. The bottom end goes into this hole down here on where it matches the fuselage. There's a little hole that has to be reamed. And the front end, I'm sorry, the, uh, the rear part has a little tab that attaches to this attachment point there with a the pin. And then of course the other side attaches way back here to the fuselage and the bolt goes all the way through to the other side. So that allows the wings to fold all the way back and they're locked in place once they fold back. So there's no, no room for movement. So the turtle deck hinge is on and this functional. The way this works is I will actually lock these in place. So these now these cam locks here open up. I gotta go to the other side. They all pop out. Then the baggage compartment is now accessible. With a hinge. So that hinges all the way up and it can close back down. Now it's not these cam locks I did permanently mount. I probably should not permanently. Washer lock in place. I probably should have them floating, but you know, I figured it's not that big of a deal. So it's got a very simple process, totally worth it. You basically just slice the thing in half and attach the shower hinge and put some screws in it. Then, after that was done, I actually finished the straight here, which is again very straightforward. You just match drill holes, uh, cut a slit in, slit in for the hinges, and riveted it onto the plane, no problem. I then went and put silicone down the gap there, down the front of the shower hinge and on the other side. I did try and silicone this together so that it didn't leak, which worked on the right side, but not on the left. So I wouldn't recommend that. If I did that again, I, I wouldn't do that. It's the wheel there. But these are all, this whole turtle deck is all done and ready to go. So my final rig I've redone for the elevator and ailerons. The, I fixed this so that it's no longer rubbing the seat pan and it's also no longer touching the dash. And that constrained angle only allowed, it's basically four degrees short of what the factory recommends. So I did 40 back, I believe 14 forward, and that's gonna be just fine for me. I'd rather have the back correct and the forward a little shy than the other way around. So while I did that, I was actually having issues with this push to talk. So I rewired my wiring from push to talk down and just drilled another hole in the side of the stick above all the mounting points and screws and ran that cabling up. And there's actual a connector down there that I can unplug so I can pull this whole stick out. 
uh, modularly without having to unwire it. Same thing with the right side. You can see there's no stick on the right side. I just wired up a connector, <clears throat> unscrewed it. Now I can just, if I want to put that right stick back in, it's one bolt and one plug and it goes back in very easily. So this is all done and ready to roll. All right, so the way we get into the configuration menu for the G3X is you press and hold the menu button and give the system power and wait. Now this says configuration mode. It's That means it's going into configuration mode and we can actually start setting these things up. So first thing that I was told to check by Nick is if you go to the system, sorry, not system options page, system information page, should be all the things connected should be lit up and green. With the exception, of course, the FADEC for the Rotax is not powered on, but we can give it power and it should turn on and turn green. There we go. There's our FADEC system. Now our, turn that off. Our comm is also off. I'll turn that on. There's our comm. Then traffic will take a minute to come alive, but it will, be, will eventually come online. That'll be green. That being said, they weren't all green from the start. A few things I had issues with. First things first, the provided unit does not have the latest software. So I actually had to go online. You need an eight gig, less than eight gigs uh, SD card. You download the latest config or uh, basically software, and then you just plug it in to here and turn it on just normally, not in the configuration mode. And it will get you through the update process. And that will update not only this unit, but also everything modularly that's attached. So I had to do that first before I could do anything else. The next thing I had an issue with was the transponder. So transponder has its own page down here. It's set up to be the GTX 45R. This is the Kit Fox setup. You have to have everything filled out on the right. <clears throat> These are what held me up. So it has to be just GTS. I don't believe GTN can be selected. At least it didn't work for me. Then RX-232 port 2 is ADS-B plus GPS, and the remaining ports are Connects Format 1. That's not all you have to do. You actually have to go back to the RS-232 page, which is here, and port 1 has to be Connects uh, 57600 baud, and then it works. Now I can actually get traffic. So we'll see if that's booted up. Nope, it's not. Why? Weird. Whatever. It does work. I know it does. Okay, the other thing I had issue with was the, the actual autopilot setup. So you just have to come in here and actually it starts on LRUs. So if you go into the LRUs, you have the Adahars 1 enabled, of course, because that's where you're getting your Adahars system from. We don't have a second source for that. There is an AOA in this one. The EIS 1, that's the engine interface. Auto si si pilot servos are pitch and roll. These all have to be disabled, which seems counterintuitive because we do have a pitch trim servo, but this is for the Garmin pitch trim servo, which we do not have. So that held me up for a while. I just made, had to make sure that was disabled. Once that was disabled, then I could come into here, the trim setting, go to the pitch trim, and you can actually test to see which way the trim is running. You can hear the trim motor running in the back. And then I can press the switch in the panel that shows me which way it's going. And if these are backwards, then you can make this reverse. So it says trim motor direction normal. And then let's see, there should be a, yeah, trim motor direction normal. You can switch those back and forth. So that's it for that. And then I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to come in here and set the speeds of all this stuff. Um, once I'm in the air to see what's the best setup for flying, because sometimes if it's trimming too fast at a really high airspeed, then it'll like make the plane porpoise. So we'll have to just have to set airspeeds and speeds and then also gains and stuff on the autopilot. So yeah, the last thing on the autopilot is for the actual pitch and roll. We have to set up the servo gains once we're flying. So we start really low with, with one basically for everything and 30, and then <clears throat> work our way up into wherever the best, so, so that the control is really smooth and it's not really wiry. Um, I did have a problem wiring up this push to talk switch, which appears to be working now. And I'll get out of the plane and show what I did for that. But everything else here is, is set up and fine um, and good to go. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. 
that's it. That's all for this one, a pretty quick update. Not a whole lot done, but we did get this thing moved here and the last little bits taken care of. The only remaining things are, we need to seal the firewall, which, stand by one second. The stuff for sealing the firewall is this, that Kitfox provides is the UPO 728 Tiger Seal. There's no temperature rating on this, so I don't know how much heat it can withstand. Either way, this expired April 2020, 420. And I ordered it, I think, in April. So they just sent me a re expired one, so I can't use it. So I'm gonna actually have to go figure out what I'm gonna actually use to seal the firewall. I have to do weigh my weight and balance, which I'm gonna weigh down the, down the taxiway here. And then that's it. I have to, I guess, put the seat belts in, but that's the very last thing I do. This is Mark, for my final inspection, everything's gonna be out. So seat pans will be out. The tail access covers will be off. Some of the floorboards will be out. And yeah, so that's as well as the turtle deck. So we'll have pretty much everything opened up for the inspector to see. I'll weigh it before we do that, get a final weight. And then there's also one other thing that I want to do, which is a fuel flow test. Basically, we'll keep it at this attitude and make sure we have fuel going to the system, check the rate, make sure that it's enough. And then we'll also do it at this angle, the taxiing or takeoff angle. And we'll make sure that we have fuel going to the, we'll basically turn the pump on see how much fuel we have coming out of the pumps, just to verify that we actually are getting the flow rate required to run on these engines. Other than that, she's ready to fly. Inspection should be in about a week or a week and a half. And other than that, we're good to go. So thanks for sticking with me on this one. And we'll see you hopefully pretty soon when this thing's flying.